What is up guys? We are back with another BIOS video and today we're checking out the BIOS here on ASRock's Z690 Tai Chi motherboard. As I always say, this BIOS should be pretty much the same across ASRock's entire Z690 line of motherboards. Now, if you're wondering, how do I get into the screen? Like, how do I get into this BIOS? All you have to do is keep on hitting the delete key on your keyboard and then you'll eventually be dropped into this BIOS. So power on your PC, keep on hitting the delete key and you'll be brought into the BIOS. And you should be brought here into easy mode. Easy mode is great because it allows you to do a few things um, you know, very easily to get your computer up and running. So up top here, um, you can see we have our, you know, lists our motherboard. It also lists the version of the BIOS that we're running. So we're running 8.06. Let's us know our processor, processor speed, total memory. And then down here we have our DRAM information. And one of the first things you're gonna wanna do is enable your XMP profile on your memory. All you have to do, um, it would, by default, it should be on auto. And then you just hit this XMP and your XMP profile is enabled. Super easy to do, no issues there. Um, then you can see our storage configuration. So we'll let you know all of the drives that you have connected. So we have one SATA drive connected and we have one M.2 drive installed. So you can go ahead and see those right there. Up top here, we do have our CPU temperature graph in real time, as well as our motherboard temperature and CPU voltage. These are all real time um, right here. Fan status, we have you know all the fans that we do have connected um, and their fan speeds. And we can see the MOS fan. That is the fan that's on the VRM heatsink. We can see that right there. Um, so let you know how fast that is spinning. Now these fans are set to standard by default, but again, you can you know turn them to performance, full speed, silent, whatever you wanna do, you can just click this and you can easily change your fan settings. Down here, we do have some tools. So we have instant flash that allows you to easily flash your BIOS. We had to do that to upgrade this BIOS to 8.06. We have internet flash, which allows you to flash your BIOS from the internet as long as you have it set up in the BIOS. And then fantastic tuning will allow you to tune all of your fans. So once you have your, you know, your motherboard installed in your case, you have all your fans connected to your motherboard, it would probably be a good idea to run the fantastic tuning. It will basically provide you with kind of like the best uh, fan curve for wherever those fans are located in your system. Over here, we have boot priority. We only have one bootable drive uh, here, and it is our uh, SATA drive. If we had more drives, we could just drag and drop. It's super easy to do. Of course, we have our date here. Um, we can go into advanced mode. We can change the, the language. Up here, we can also just turn the RGB lighting on the board on or off. You just click this and you can just turn it off and it turn it on. Um, and then you can, you know, discard changes, uh, save and exit, load defaults, and then help and information will just bring up uh, this little help menu right here. So that is easy mode. Again, the things you wanna see in easy mode, uh, probably most importantly is XMP profile. We have it right here, boot priority, we have that as well. Those are kind of the main things I always like to see, but it's good to see that we have, you know, some tools listed here, as well as we can change some fan settings and see all of our storage and all of that. Now, if you wanna go in deeper, we can go to advanced mode. So we can just click up here or hit F6 on our keyboard. And now we're into the advanced mode. Um, you will be dropped into the main menu or the main tab right here. Here it just lists again all of the information of kind of what we have installed in our system. And we have a my favorites menu. Now I haven't added anything to this menu, but if you know any setting that's in the BIOS, I can add into my my favorites menu and then I can access it very easily instead of going you know, through multiple windows or um, multiple tabs to find different settings. I can put them all in sort of like a favorites menu, which is really cool. Now, if you're gonna be wanting to do any overclocking, ever any tweaking, it's all done in the OC tweaker tab. Um, the good thing to see is we have our targets up top here. So if you change settings, you'll see kind of what you're shooting for as far as your speeds and, and everything like that. Um, it's just always good to know if I change the setting, what you know, what is my processor gonna be running at? You have all of that up here. CPU V-Core compensation is set to auto by default, but again, you can 
uh, set different levels right here. And one thing I really like about what ASRock does is they have everything in these little folders. So everything to do with CPU is in a folder. Everything to do with DRAM is in a folder and so on. Um, and then you have profiles. Um, you know, we haven't saved any profiles, but you can save profiles here as well. So let's go into CPU configuration. Again, um, turbo ratio information is like another folder in itself. So again, we can kind of see all of the information on our P cores and E cores in there. And then CPU configuration. So P core ratio, again, everything is set to auto by default. If you don't plan on overclocking, just leave everything on auto. Um, but you can do all core, per core, specific per core settings in uh, both the uh, P cores as well as the E cores. Uh, cash ratio, CPU flex ratio, uh, BCLK, and then you can actually go into BCLK advanced settings, go in there, um, boot performance mode, um, you know, FLL overclocking mode, you can turn Intel speed step on or off, all of the Intel different boosts you can turn on or off as well. Uh, you have a folder for TVB information, you can see that, um, CJTJ Max, again, um, this adjusts the temperature, so if you don't want your CPU to get too hot, uh, you can set that. Um, your power limits, again, you can set this for overclocking um, and all of that. So you have all that kind of stuff, you know, all right here in your CPU configuration. Now you can just hit escape to go back to the previous menu, or you can just click uh, the little arrow here and we'll go back in DRAM information. Um, we can actually see the memory information in real time here. So you can see, you know, everything on the memory that we have installed. Um, and then under, you know, your XMP setting, of course we can enable or disable our XMP profile. Same thing in easy mode, but it's just right here as well, XMP 3.0, and it enables it and does all of that. Uh, you can do your timing modes. You can um, change the frequency too. So if you are gonna wanna overclock your DDR5, this is kind of the easy way to do it without messing with your timings. So all you would have to do is, you know, set your XMP profile. Instead of changing this to auto, you know, we're at 4,800. If we wanted to bump this up to, you know, just say 5,000, we could easily do that and have a simple memory overclock. Um, super simple. You know, this is again, everything to do with your timings and you can do your primary timings that you can change. So if you wanted to loosen or tighten timings and then your secondary timings, basically all your timings uh, are all right in here, you know, that you can go through. I know most of you won't be changing any of this, but this is again, everything to do with memory as far as settings go. Um, and then advanced settings, um, ASRock timing optimization, ASRock frequency optimization, all that kind of stuff uh, is right there. And then voltage configuration. Again, this is all of your voltages. So your voltages for your CPU and DRAM will be in here. So voltage mode, uh, you can set stable, mo stable mode or OC mode. OC mode doesn't open up any extra settings. Um, I'll show you kind of how you have to do that. Um, but yeah, so like CPU core uh, and cache voltage again, offset or fixed mode. Um, you know, all of your different voltages are in here and you can go ahead and change those. Um, and again, you can see your DDR5 information as far as voltages. But again, everything to do with voltage here, you can change and set how you want. And then we have our fiber configuration. So this is this allows you to do some different things. So like your CPU or CPU voltage is set to adaptive, but you can change it to override. Um, and all of these, you know, like your you know, your E core L2 voltage mode, again, it's set to adaptive, but you can set it to override, ring voltage mode, same thing. So you can change all of that right in the fiber configuration. And that's everything to do with kind of tuning. It's very easy. I really like it again, how ASRock has all of these little folders. So you know where everything is. You don't have to jump through a million, um, you know, you don't have to go down like a page really far to find all of these settings. It's all in these folders. So the next tab is advanced. And this is like pretty much everything else that's on the board. So for CPU configuration, again, it shows us our information on our CPU. We can see our P core information as well as our E core information. And then we can, you know, turn on different CPU specific settings. Like we can turn hyper threading on or off 
per core hyper threading we can turn on or off. Um, you know, if you're doing certain type of overclocking, maybe we want to disable the E cores. We can disable or enable both the P core or E cores. You have your C states, all that kind of stuff. Um, thermal throttling, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff to do with the CPU is right in this menu. Chipset configuration. Again, um, you know, setting your primary graphics adapter, it's just set to auto by default, but everything kind of to do with the chipset, all your link speeds, um, everything to kind of do with that is all right here. You can enable or disable both of your uh, LAN connections, you know, your HD audio, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. You can disable your RGB LEDs, onboard uh, button LEDs, which is kind of nice as well. Um, you can turn those on or off if you want as well. So that's everything to kind of do with the chipset here. Storage configuration. Um, again, you can enable or disable different SATA controllers. Um, oops, I went one too far over. Let's go back in here. <laughs> all right, um, let me move that so it doesn't do that. Um, you know, you can see all of your information on your drive. So here is our SATA drive. Um, and you know, we can see all of our information on that. And then our M.2, we can see information on our M.2 drive um, and all that in different SATA mode selections. And you can set up RAID this way. It's all right here in the storage configuration. NVMe configuration just gives us information on our drive. We can see uh, that our drive is installed here. Intel Thunderbolt support, if you want it, disable or enable it. Of course, this board does have Thunderbolt 4. Um, so again, it should be enabled by default. ACP, ACPI configuration. Again, um, you can change these different things if you would like. USB configuration. Again, um, you can see how many USB controllers you have and USB devices. Oops, I keep on hitting the wrong button. Trusted computing. Now, you won't, have, this is not where you will enable Intel PTT. This is everything to do with a TPM 2.0 device, you know, on your system. You won't have to change any of this. So you don't have to go in here to enable PTT or anything like that. This is just um, all of those settings for your TPM device. Um, and then UEFI configuration. So your UEFI setup style. So when we loaded into the BIOS, we were dropped into the easy mode, but you can actually change that to advanced mode. Um, active page on entry. Um, so if we go into advanced mode, what page do we want to be on? Do we want to be on the main, my favorites, all that kind of stuff. You can actually set that. And then full HD UEFI, just, you should just leave that to auto. Now, if we go over to tools, um, we have ASRock polychrome RGB. So you can actually set the RGB lighting on the board without having to install the ASRock polychrome RGB um, software on your system. So you can do it all right here. You can set the different effects. You can do all of that right here, which is pretty cool. Um, you can't do it like per device. This is just, or maybe you can. I guess you can. You can do it per device, which is pretty cool. So you can set each one um, all of the headers, you can do it all right here. You don't have to download their software if you don't want to. IO, IO cover gear rotating. So there, there is a gear on this motherboard that does move because it is a Tai Chi motherboard. Um, and you can set the interval that it does its little, I guess you would call it an animation, but whenever the gear kind of turns on the board itself. Um, the intervals you have are five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, and 60 minutes, or you can turn it off if you don't want it doing that little uh, animation. So you have that. UEFI text service, this actually allows you to send an email um, to text service if you're having issues. Easy RAID installer, SS SSD secure erase. So if you're getting rid of an old SSD, um, you give one to a friend or you're selling one, uh, secure erase, you definitely wanna do that. And same thing with the NVMe sanitation tool, basically the same type of thing, but for uh, NVMe drives. Auto driver installer. So like most motherboards these days, you know, when you install Windows 10 or Windows 11 on this, um, it will ask you to download their auto driver installer, which I think is great. I think it makes it super easy to get all the drivers. You don't have to download, you know, seven different different drivers. It just does it all in one app. Um, it is disabled, but you can enable it if you want. Um, but it, yeah, it just makes it so much easier. So that is where that is. If you're weirded out about that popping up all the time, you can just disable that independent SATA in USB. So on this board, there is an independent SATA connection or SATA port and an independent USB port. 
You can set these to normal mode or you can only boot from those specific ports. Um, you can set that up right here. Um, and then you, again, you have some utilities like Instant Flash, Intel MEI Flash, Internet Flash, and then you can set your network configuration so you can do the Internet Flash and all of that. Hardware monitor just gives you a live view of all of your temperatures, voltages, and fan speeds. Um, you know, you can go through and set all that. And in here we do have our fan tuning and fantastic tuning. And then all of our fan settings um, are all right in here as well. Going over to security. So this is where you would enable uh, Intel PTT for Windows 11. It is enabled by default um, on all of the BIOSes. So even if you had an early version of this motherboard, it has PTT enabled by default, so you don't have to do anything. But if for some reason it's disabled and you can't install Windows, this is the setting right here. Setting a uh, supervisor password, user password, and then setting up secure boot. And then under boot, we have all of our boot options and then different settings for you know booting and everything like that. And then under exit, of course, we have our save changes and all that kind of stuff. And then our boot override, which again, I always talk about um, have, oops, having boot override uh, is great if you're installing Windows from a flash drive, which you should be doing. Um, you just do the boot override to the flash drive first. And then when it restarts, you don't have to worry about pulling uh, that flash drive out. So it's just great. So um, yeah, this BIOS is great. Like I said, it, there's no, there's nothing that I couldn't find in this BIOS. Um, it's easy to toggle between easy mode and advanced mode. The easy mode has everything that you would want, I think. Um, everything's here. So it's, it's really, really easy to find all the settings in this. Um, en enable XMP profile, set your different fan settings. You can change all of your RGB settings before you even, you know, install Windows and all of that. So. If you have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you got anything out of this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.